Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saver CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. I have a great video for you. We're going to do a walk around of a Shop Saver RC CNC router. When we redesigned the Shop Saber RC series CNC routers, we wanted to create a model that would be affordable by people in the past who have had to settle for CNC machines from China. Now you can have an American-made CNC router that's got all the quality and design that Shop Savers have that's price competitive. That's a game changer. You know, we took a lot of design ideas from our IS series and applied them to this new design. For one thing, the base frame is all welded steel and it's structural steel. If you look at the wells, they're impeccable also, just the same kind of quality that you get on our larger machines. Now here's something that's really neat. This is the same steel gantry design that we use on the larger machines. And we do that for a reason. Most machines in this price range are gonna have a flimsy aluminum gantry, and that translates directly to your edge finish. These steel gantries really give us a quality cut and a real high level of accuracy on these machines. Now let's talk about the motion package we put on these. We use the same oversized precision contour guide rails and all the axis on these machines as we do the larger machines. Here's what that does for you. That defines the axis of motion and that's accuracy and that's where you get your edge finish. You know, with that also, we, we use in the X and Y axis, we use rack and pinions and once again, we use the largest rack and pinion drive systems in our class. And of course, in the Z axis, which is really the most precise, we use ball screw. Now let's talk about what it actually takes to create motion on this machine. In addition to these machines having oversized rack and pinions, we also address a specific issue that, that's common with rack and pinions, and that has to do with play between the pinion and the rack that occasionally happens. What that means is periodically your machine operator is going to have to stop and adjust that and make sure that the machine cuts all okay all over the table. We developed a special technology at Shop Saber CNC that we call Shop Saber Floating Drive Technology that takes care of that problem and maintains that adjustment automatically with very little maintenance. Now we actually turn that pinion with planetary drives. Once again, they're virtually maintenance free, have very, very little play. We actually turn those drives in with your choice of either steppers or closed loop digital servos. Now, let's take a look at the final part of motion control, the Shop Saber CNC control system. You know, when you start looking at the machine controls, there's a huge difference between what we offer at Shop Saber with the RC series and what the competitors have. Most of them are Chinese machines, and they're gonna have this little handheld control called a DSP. Well, if you shop around, you can find out. You can buy their entire control system for under $400 shipped to your house directly from China. So that's what your machine dollar is buying. We take a different approach on that. We wanted the control experience to be just like it was for the other machines in our product line. So we put the Shop Saver CNC controller on here. Here's how this thing works. The user interface is actually operating in a window screen. That window screen gives us the ability to connect to the outside world so we can transfer files in. It also gives us the ability to run software at the machine controller if we want to. We developed the technology on a real robust platform and it works really, really well. But you know, there's another part of machine control that has to do with people and that's how easy is it for the operator to use. Let me show you how simple it is to actually run this machine with this controller. What really stands out to me first when I look at the machine control interface is how easy and intuitive everything is. All right, if you look at this area, this is actually the machine table itself and this is where the spindle is on the machine. Okay, this area allows me to jog, so when I hit that, it moves back and forth. So that moves the machine across the table in all the different axes. I can also move incrementally an inch at a time down to one thousandth at a time so I can really make precise setup moves. And up here, you'll actually see uh, the X and Y coordinates change. Now this area down here, these buttons primarily are things that we use on a regular basis. For instance, when we first turn the machine on, we home it. When uh, we, we touch off tools, that's what a button here does. We set zeros. The kind of things that we do that are part of set are, are in this area. Now I've actually got to override, so when I'm running a program, I can override the RPMs. Maybe I want it to uh, spin faster or slower. I can also change the feed dress. So while it's running, I can really dial in where sometimes you do it by sound, where the cut just sounds good. Now, let's look at what's it required to actually execute a program. So I come up here to the top, I say file, we'll open a program. 
All right, and I'm going to hit this button that has the little viewer. And you see down here, that's what the program looks like on the machine. So one of the first things my operator can do is look at that and make sure that's what it's supposed to be, that you, you have selected the correct program. And after that, all you do is hit the green button and it executes and the machine starts. And then you can see live on the control screen itself where the machine's actually going. So it's a really, really, really simple way to run a CNC machine. Now, let's take a look at the router spindle. We offer these machines with a number of different spindle options. This happens to have our entry level spindle, which is a Porter cable router motor. The beauty of that little spindle is it runs on 110, so that makes the entire machine run on 110. So if you have power problems in your shop, that might work for you. A spindle that's really, really popular also is our HSD spindle. It's more of an industrial spindle. You can probably run it longer. All of our spindles have fans already built in. You don't have to have some kind of liquid cooler with a bucket of water and an aquarium pump that wreaks havoc in the winter. Now, there's something else that's really neat about this design. You'll see these unusual parts, and there's a story behind those. First off, we use finite element analysis software to do all our engineering design and testing. So we took some ideas we had on the IS, and we said, okay, let's apply that to this machine. What we were trying to do was to create this more spindle rigidity down in the cut. Well, how do you do that? Well, you mechanically have more support into the design. That's what these plates are. They basically formed angles, all right? So we came up with a couple ideas. We ran them through the software, and they looked promising. So then we actually made the parts, put them in place, and actually did testing. That came out pretty good. So then we said, okay, We've achieved the goal now. Can we achieve that same goal by reducing mass? And that's what these holes are. And so the answer was yes, and that's why you see that on here. So you see a lot of engineering in these machines. Now, let's take a look at the tables on these machines. This machine is a four by eight configuration. We also offer it in a four by four. This has an MDF table, and you'll notice it has a really neat option on it, and that's T-slots. And you look first, you see, holy cow, look at all the T-slots. So that means there's lots of places to clamp onto. But there's something you really don't see, and, and that most of the competitors don't do, and it's how you attach the T-slots. There's actually a steel plate underneath here, and those T-slots screw into the steel plate. So they're really, really rigid. Now, you know, we also make this table in a phenolic version as well as a vacuum table. Now, there's an interesting note here. First, this is bigger than 4 by 8 because we always make our machine tables oversized. And the machine has enough travel, so that table is actually machined on the machine. Here's what that means on your vacuum table. You don't have to have gasket between your vacuum table and your spoil board because the machine's so flat, it does that. Now, let's talk about one more thing, and that has to do with how you set zeros on this machine. Well, it should be pretty clear as you've watched through this demonstration that we're really, really concerned about what the role of the machine operator is going to be on these machines. One part of that is actually tool touch off. So when you put a tool t in, how, do you, how does the machine control know where the tip of the tool is? So on these machines, as a standard feature, we also include our automatic tool touch off. So the tool's loaded, you push a button on the control, and the machine automatically touches it off. Now we've just added a new option that's available that has to do with material touch off. So when you change material thickness, you simply set the switch on there and let the machine locate that. That's a great new option. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really excited about this new Shop Saber RC Series CNC routers. You know, now, if your budget's not enough to afford one of our Pro Series or IS Series, here's a great option for you. If you have any more questions about it, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.